Over the last few weeks, if you have been paying any attention to the financial and economic news that's been going on, you have probably been hearing this word, debt ceiling. It has a weird thing called the debt ceiling. Today in this video, we're gonna be getting into what is the debt ceiling all about? Who does the United States owe this much money to? And then lastly, I'm gonna show you personally what I'm doing in order to benefit from this situation and something that you can do to benefit from this situation as well. But before we get into it, I would really appreciate it if you could hit the like button, hit the subscribe button so that you could come back for more videos. It really helps out the channel a lot. What is the debt ceiling? In the United States, as you've probably seen in the news, they are trillions upon trillions upon trillions of dollars in debt. In the last 20 years, the US has borrowed more and more money. And every few years or so, they start to come to the limit of how much debt they can have. have just two more days to raise the nation's debt ceiling. Basis of the Republican strategy. Americans need to stop playing Russian. And so this is known as the debt ceiling and in order for them to take on any additional debt over and above of the debt that they currently have congress white house everybody kind of needs to get together and agree that they should increase the debt ceiling the debt limit since then congress and the president have had to raise it seven more times it's becoming an almost annual task and so that is what they're kind of all debating right now a big question that constantly comes up is that the united states is in so much debt and for that matter canada is in debt so many world nations are in debt but a lot of people want to know who are they in debt to dollars in debt to who 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 do we owe Jupiter? they owe 17 trillion dollars 30 trillion dollars whatever you know billions and billions of dollars who do they owe this money to and the answer is each other people like you and me, everybody else. You see, what happens is, if you take a look at some of the mutual funds that are out there, or ETFs, and what you wanna look for is you look at the fixed income, right? What happens is when the government, or when a company, anything like that is looking to raise money, what they'll do is they will issue government-backed securities, certain types of what they call fixed income bonds. There's two ways they get money. One is either through taxes, the other one is through bonds. And so if you look in these type of mutual funds, you can see that there's a lot of government bonds in here. And so what this is, is this is debt. So what happens is a company like Fidelity or a company like McKinsey or any of these other type of investment firms will buy up thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions, even billions of dollars worth of this government debt because they are relying on the fact that it is a stable and steady way to make interest for their clients. Uh, what happens is you have a lot of these different companies buying up all this government debt. You have, you know, maybe, maybe firms in China, pension plants, all these type of things buying up government debt. And so when they say there's 17 trillion dollars in debt, they're essentially in debt to all the people who invest in these type of government uh, issued debt instruments, these government issued securities. And the thing that makes it attractive for all of these type of investors, the thing that they see as it being a really safe type of investment, not guaranteed, but safe, is the fact that it is backed by the US government, the Canadian government, the, uh, you know, the, the British government, for example. They see these as very strong and stable economies, and so they have that confidence that if they what you're doing when you buy into these fixed income mutual funds and ETF, you are essentially helping Fidelity lend the US government, the Canadian government, whoever money. And so they have this confidence that these governments are always going to be able to pay their bills. But when that debt ceiling is reached, if they don't come to some type of agreement on increasing that limit, they, it may impact their ability to repay some of these debts. A default for the first time in our nation's history. And that could, in fact, in the future, make it more difficult for them to go out and raise money for other types of projects. So that is what they're debating right now as to whether or not they should increase the debt ceiling. It's kind of like if you have a credit card or something like this 
and you're call, you call the bank and ask them, hey, you know, instead of having a, having a thousand or two thousand dollar credit limit, I like to increase it to three thousand, four thousand, five thousand, etc. But instead of the bank simply saying yes or no, what's happening here is that Congress is actually voting on whether or not they can increase that debt spending limit. Why it, does this have the market so jittery? Why does this make everybody scared? One of the big consequences of the United States not increasing that debt spending limit is that a lot of programs end up getting cut, whether that is to various types of companies, industries, and things like that, or even social programs like Medicare and Medicaid. So having a cap put on this debt ceiling could lead to a lot of cuts in certain types of social programs. The other thing that is a major concern is if this debt ceiling is not increased, it could impact the credit score and the credit worthiness of the United States on the world stage. And so the United States for a really long time had a triple A rating. So one of the things that allows them to continuously borrow and borrow and increase their debt is that they constantly and continuously make their payments on time. It's kind of like if you miss your credit card payment or you miss your rent payment or your mortgage payment or anything like that, it decreases your credit score. And so your ability to go out and get credit in the future will be impacted by that. It's the same kind of thing that if the United States is late on paying the interest and the different things on some of the debt that they owe, it'll make it difficult for them to go out into the market and get further debt and further credit for the various types of projects that they have anyway. 2011, when it almost didn't. After that, the U.S. was downgraded for the first time. So is this going to impact you? Is this going to impact your overall investment portfolio or investment strategy? I've been in this industry for almost 10 years and we've come to this US debt ceiling at least three times, if I can remember correctly, in the last 10 years. And every single time the governments have used it as a way for political leverage and political maneuvering, but ultimately they do end up increasing that debt ceiling. Now, at some point in my opinion, the chicken will have to come home to roost, but that won't be for a while yet. Uh, as far as volatility is concerned, certainly this may cause some short-term ups and downs in the overall market. And so for you, if you are someone who is in a situation where you might need the money in the next three, six, nine months or so, then my advice would be to try to be as conservative as you possibly can. Don't be going for high returns, go for safety. Try to keep your money in as safe a place as possible. So for all the Muslims out there, you don't, you wanna be keeping it relatively close to cash because that way you can get the money anytime and there's no telling what the ups and downs of the markets are gonna do, but for the most part, you're probably gonna be okay. Now, if you are someone who's got a long period of time before you need the money, we're talking five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, you're probably gonna be okay riding out this short-term volatility. Now, what I do personally in these type of situations and what I think everybody should be doing for the most part forever is something called dollar cost averaging. And that is every single month, as best you can, try to invest a little bit of money. Or maybe you get paid every every two weeks, invest a portion of that paycheck into some long-term investments. So if the goal is to save up for retirement, if their goal is to save up for your kid's education, the goal is to save up for Hajj, this money can be invested over a long period of time. A fun fact is that the markets never have a negative return over a 20 year period. So if you've got a long period of time before you need the money, just put money in constantly and consistently and you're going to be okay. These short term ups and downs are not something to concern yourself with. So for me personally, what I'm doing is I'm gonna be sitting this, riding this out like everything else because I don't have a short term need for my retirement savings or my any type of money. But if you are someone who's looking to save up for that down payment, you're gonna be using the money in the next really short period of time, be as safe as you can possibly be, get into a cash position, something like that. Now, from the Islamic perspective, the one thing that I will say is that the debt market is completely haram for us. It is not permissible for us to own any form of fixed income out there. So if you wanna look at the Fidelity fixed income ETFs 
or you want to look at certain types of bond funds or bond ETFs, these are completely impermissible when it comes to Islam because they deal in interest, they deal in riba. And so if you look at chapter 2 verse 275 of the Quran, or you look at other chapters and verses of the Quran, we cannot touch any form of interest. Uh, so overall, that is it for me. If you need a little bit of extra help with any of this type of stuff or have some questions on whether or not you are going to be impacted by the debt ceiling or any of these other type of things, make sure you book a free call. Click the link below, CanadianIslamicWealth.com. We're happy to help you. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum.